Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to The Walk. Today is Thursday, February 10th, and today we're kind of um, taking yesterday's message and adding a little bit more to it. We're talking more about the importance of having that time with God, remaining in Him, staying attached to that vine, and how that, how that empowers you as you go through your day. So let's pray. God, I thank you for the fact that your word is so precious to us, that we're able to understand you better, that that word can come into our minds, come into our hearts, and help to transform us and make us more and more like you. Lord, we thank you that that word became flesh when you came down here on earth and that you had that earthly ministry and you went to the cross, you paid for the price of our sins. We thank you that you rose from the dead. And because of that, we get to have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're able to be empowered. We're able to walk in bold confidence as we go through our day because we know that that strength and that power comes from you and you alone. Lord, help us to remember that. Help us to keep those God goggles on our face and be aware of every moment where we can step up and serve you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're starting in Psalm 119, verse 105. And this says, the word, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. So let's break this down. What does a lamp do? Well, you walk into a room that's pitch black. You turn on the lamp. And all of a sudden, you can see things that you didn't see before. That, lamp, that word is our spiritual lamp. That word helps us to understand things that we wouldn't understand without the word of God. Verse 6, and this is how valuable that word of God is. I have taken an oath and confirmed it, that I will follow your righteous laws. So that he, this person that wrote this psalm is so um, the word is so precious to him that he's going to do everything he can to follow those laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. He's praying that your word says you will preserve my life and you will take care of me. And I'm asking you to do that. He's claiming the promises of God. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws. That, that's reflecting right back to his word. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. This person's heart is set on being obedient to God. And that's where we need to be. And we get charged up to do that when we spend that time in that prayer closet. Next, we're going to John 1, 1, <coughs> and it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So that Word of God was there in the beginning, it was with God, and it was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. So now we know that this Word is a person. Through this person, all things were made. Without him, nothing that has was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. So in this person, we have the life, we have life, and that life is the light that illuminates the things that we need to see. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. If you take a candle and you're in a completely dark room, you take a candle, you put it on a table in front of the wall, and then you shine a flashlight on that candle. The actual candle part will cast a shadow, but the flame does not cast a shadow. Why doesn't the flame cast the shadow? Because there's no darkness in that light. There's no darkness in who Christ is. We know that this is Christ that it's talking about. Skipping down to verse 9, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. It's talking about Jesus. 
He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. All those powers that be did not recognize Christ as the Messiah, and they crucified him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. He came straight to the Israelites, and they did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. When we do receive him, we become, we become those children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. And then this is where it's really pointing to Jesus even more. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. That light is full of that grace and truth. That light is full of God's glory. In John 8, 12, Jesus spoke again. It, it says, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We need to be bold in knowing that we're walking in that light. And then in Ephesians 5, 8, it says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the world, in the Lord. So think this through. You've, because you've entered into this relationship with Christ, and Christ is that light, you are now able to emulate that light as you go through your day. As you're praying for people silently, you're bringing that light into that situation. As you are um, telling others about Christ, you're bringing that light into that situation. As you're just loving on people, you're bringing that light into that situation. And the Holy Spirit's going to reveal things to you through that light. <clears throat> Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. How do we find out what pleases the Lord? We get our nose in that Bible and we learn what pleases the Lord. Of verse 11, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Light exposes the things that are going on in the darkness. You turn on that lamp and you can see what's going on in the darkness. You know, my dog could be moving around in the house and yeah, I might be able to hear her, but if the house is dark, I'm not gonna be sure where she is until I turn on that light. And then I can see where she is. Verse 12, it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. So as we're going through our day, We've got these things that are going to be exposed by the light. That light is coming from our relationship with Christ and the Holy Spirit. And it's going to expose things to us that maybe we need to pray over. Maybe there's something we can do to, to serve God and help build his kingdom. And we need to be mindful of that. This is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. You were spiritually dead when you entered into this relationship with Christ and you have risen out of that dead, out of that death. And now you've got the light of the world shining through you because Christ is inside you. As you go into your prayer closet, pray that God shows you everything he wants you to see today and that you're able to act in bold obedience. That relentless obedience is so very precious. Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.